Let's get straight to the politics of the day. My colleague Andrew Clennell, our political editor, standing by. And it was a, it was an unusual one right at the end of Mark Butler's speech. He dropped it out there, but it's a significant move, another increase in the Siggy tax. And just when the Prime Minister's gone overseas, what a coincidence, Kieran. We've had the first tax increase announcement of the budget today, an increase in tobacco tax of 5% a year, raising $3.3 billion over four years. Here is Health Minister Mark Butler announcing it. Today I announced that tax on tobacco will be increased by 5% per year over the next three years, starting on September 1st because we know that a higher priced cigarette is a more unattractive cigarette. We will also align the tax treatment of tobacco products so that products like roll your own tobacco and manufactured sticks are taxed equally. All right, so it's not read my lips, no new taxes. Will a resource rent tax increase be next? That's the question. Are there any other nasties coming up in this budget. We know the former coalition government increased tobacco excise significantly. The Labor government before them uh, did it as well. Smokers are seen as a bit of a soft touch because the argument is you're trying to save their lives. And we know those tax changes have meant that one in four Australians used to smoke 20 years ago. Now it's kind of one in 10. $14 billion a year tobacco excise is worth. Look like, looks like it'll be seven or $800 million a year on top of that. Now, for days now, I've been reporting there will be a small rise to job seeker in the budget. The mystery of how that will occur has been solved with the leaked revelation last night that over 55s on job seeker will be receiving more, but it will be a modest increase. The suggestion is the age at which people do receive more, eligible to receive more on JobSeeker, might be lowered from 60 to 55. Under the current system, if you are 60 and over and have been on unemployment benefits for nine months, you are eligible to an increase of $52 a fortnight. Treasurer Jim Chalmers was asked about this this morning. There'll be responsible cost of living relief in the budget. Uh, and it will focus on the most vulnerable people. Women over 55 uh, are the most vulnerable group amongst unemployed Australians. Uh, we've indicated before that we want to do something to help them in particular. OK, well, this aligns with what the Prime Minister indicated in an interview with me a fortnight ago where he said Labor would always try to do something for the vulnerable, but he signalled out women in particular and the report of the government's Women's Economic Equality Task Force. We know one of the key poverty demographics in Australia is women aged over 55. Jim Chalmers said it there. We also know the eligibility for the single parent payment is set to be broadened in the budget. The PM also said in this interview the budget was about spending restraint to bring down inflation. It also will be a budget of restraint as well. We recognise the inflationary pressures that are there globally. A Labor government will always look for ways in which we can provide assistance to those in need. But we also have plans for social equity and for particularly uh, dealing with uh, gender equity as well. Sam Mostyn's done some great work on women's economic equality and we'll be uh, considering those, uh, those issues as well. All right, Jim Chalmers indicates there will be relief for all the vulnerable in the budget. Perhaps this means there will be a bump in rental assistance as well. But if ever there was a time you could justify not increasing job seeker across the board, it is when unemployment is at 3.5%, the lowest since the 1970s, and we have real labour shortages in the economy. Speaking of which, there's been an interesting move from Defence Minister Richard Miles today. In the face of major workforce issues for the Defence Force, the Deputy PM has announced a $50,000 sign-on bonus for service men and women who are renewing their service. Today's announcement is a really important step and it builds on uh, the other priorities that we have been focusing on in response to the Defence Strategic Review. But getting the human element right um, of uh, building our Defence Force for the future is so profoundly important and today is a very important step in that direction.